100 jobs to go in Hampshire County Council shake-up. Rural crime hits Hampshire. Winchester plays host to American Congress. And in sport, Eastleigh and Basingstoke lock horns in the huge local derby. Good afternoon and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Cara Lathwaite. Over a thousand jobs are to go as Hampshire County Council struggles to cope with its budget deficit. The hardest hit will be children's services, which are set to lose 500 workers. Sam Homewood reports. Hampshire County Council's Sure Start centres are the first education that most children receive, but their future is in doubt after job losses were announced. At the council's latest budget meeting, it was decided that 458 jobs will be cut in children's services. This could cause some centres which offer early education and support to families to merge or even close. And I know a lot of single mothers that do rely on the Sure Start system. It is a big part of their life. It's very important for them. For a lot of people, a lot of people that I know that I've met through the Short Start system as well, these places are vital. There's other ways they could do it. I mean, someone take a pay cut. On Friday, Hampshire County Council's Cabinet met here at their HQ to discuss a funding gap of £55 million. The solution? To lay off nearly 1,200 posts, significantly from the child services area. The county's treasurer, Caroline Williamson, warned that the county is facing changes of an unprecedented scale. Council leader Ken Thornbush stressed the cuts are necessary. Uh, I am very concerned. We wouldn't want one person to leave, but uh, we have to find £55 million. Pounds. Councillor Mel Kendall has warned that not all redundancies will be voluntary. Natural waste should take care of a lot too. Nevertheless, there will be some where we will be forced to make redundancies, and that is always a pity. Sam Homewood, Winchester News Online, Hampshire County Council. Well, we can now go live to our news editor, Julie Corgate, for more information. Julie, you're in the newsroom right now. If I'm correct, earlier today there was quite a large backlash from Southampton in regards to these cuts. What can you tell us about that? Well, Cara, we've just learned that hundreds of workers took the streets of Southampton earlier today to protest against wage and job cuts. Our union source told we know that it was the biggest protest they've ever seen in Southampton. Workers are protesting against the Tory proposal, which suggests that 250 jobs should be axed within the Southampton City Council, including 40 senior managers. The protesters gathered in front of the Civic Centre, waiting for the budget meeting to take place, as you could see on the picture. They are now in a council chamber, discussing the budget cuts and how people will be affected. So, under these Conservative proposals, who and what are going to be affected? Well, we expect council workers and subcontractors to be the first affected by this proposal, but such extreme cuts are likely to make life difficult for vulnerable groups such as the elderly and disabled as well. Right, well, thanks for that, Julie. If there is any more information, we will be sure to come back to you. Gangs of thieves are targeting farms across Hampshire. Locals say the problem is getting worse and they are appealing for police to increase patrols. Andrew Giddings reports. Think of Hampshire and you think of country lanes, peaceful fields and the good life. But this picture of rural calm masks a growing crime wave. Ruth Harper Adams works as a secretary for a number of farms. Uh, this particular farm that I'm working on today, um, we have a very bad problem with fly tipping. I mean, most of the farms I work for, um, there's a, a crime issue, uh, there's poaching, there's oil theft, um, sometimes livestock theft or damage to fields that may affect livestock. It's a variety of crimes being committed in the rural sector. Uh, a lot of them are farm-based or country-based in as much as that uh, scrap metal is being taken from farmyards. Uh, there's all sorts of crimes of poaching going on, that kind of thing, um, and some high-value burglaries. Robin Nettle is the co-owner of a business that has been repeatedly targeted by thieves and even suffered a ram raid earlier this month. This is the second time in the, about the last year in Winchester that we've been broken into. It's not just the volume of product that's stolen, it's the aftermath. It's probably £30,000 worth of damage to the building. They just seem to be getting away with it. The police aren't doing anything. 
but Hampshire police insist that they are continuing to tackle what they do admit is a serious problem, one which can only be solved with the help of the community. Andrew Giddings for Winchester News Online. The American Studies Department at the University of Winchester has recently played host to two very special guests who treated the students to a talk. David Champion tells us more. Students at the University of Winchester were treated to a debate on Friday when two former U.S. congressmen visited to discuss Obama's time in office so far. Uh, this is a week-long program we've been on, and we've been at uh, colleges, and uh, we went to Oxford College, we were at Oxford Brooks College, we were at the University of Northampton, we were at uh, Wellington College, and now here at, uh, at Winchester. Uh, because of Obama's, I mean, the strength of his personality, the strength of his campaign, and the, and the uh, Democratic leadership in the uh, legislature, they were able to accomplish something that is really pretty extraordinary. You don't see that very often. I think it's always a good experience for us. We better understand. Uh, what's on your mind, how you view, view the U.S. I particularly have been impressed uh, with the thoughtfulness of the students that we have uh, met with. It's a beautiful uh, community and I uh, hope to come back. David Champion, Winchester News Online. Winchester MP Steve Bryan has challenged the developers who want to build upon Barton Farm in North Winchester and has spoken strongly against the housing development plans. Shira Pingchuk tells us more. The debate over Barton Farm development heated up today when conservative MP confronted Carla Holmes over their plan. But I do want everybody, including Carla Holmes, to recognize that the old ways are over. The Soviet diktat style from Whitehall has gone. I know it suited you, but it's gone. Steve Bryan spoke against the plan to build 2,000 houses on a farmland north to Winchester. There is a need for new housing in Winchester. Uh, the policy of the government is not anti homes it is pro-localism. And we'll decide for ourselves. Calam lawyers, Peter Village QC, hit back while hinting that Mr. Bryan represents a narrow section of his public. Well, there's about 50 people in here. There's 50,000 people in Winchester. I think the MP is back in the wrong horse. I think he should be sticking up for and supporting people on his housing waiting list. The inquiry in this building expected to last until Friday. Shira Pinchuk, Winchester Online. And now for your sports update with Michael Connolly. So, Michael, what do you have for us? Well, Cara, we start with highlights as East look to continue their fantastic league form away to bitter local rivals, Basingstoke Town. Gareth Messenger went to the cameras to see the action. Eastley went to the Camrose on Saturday looking to push for the playoff places and they started brightly with Jamie Slabber heading a corner just wide. Eastley continued to press and got their rewards, Slabber scoring with a delightful finish despite the home side's appeals for offside. To Slabber, and he's open the scoring for Eastley. It's a scrappy goal but a marvellous finish by Slabber. Eastley doubled their lead in first half injury time when Simon Locke fumbled Anthony Riviere's strike. Oh, and it's squirmed through the arms of Locke, and it is it in? The referee's given a goal, and it's 2 0. Shades of Robert Green here at the Camrose. Questions were raised whether the ball crossed the line. Our replays were inconclusive. Make up your own mind. Basingstoke improved in the second half and Matt Warner was put through to score his sixth goal of the season. Sam York has played in Warner here, left foot shot and he's pulled a goal back and the Dragons are right back in it here. Eastley had a chance to finish the game late on but Locke saved well before the referee blew the full time whistle giving the Spitfires all three points. After the match Frank Gray was critical of the officials decisions. The lad say he was offside, and the second goal say he wasn't over the line. So that's two decisions that's probably been big decisions today that have gone against us. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. Those teams were in action again Monday night, easily putting four past league strugglers to St Albans City, with Jamie Slava scoring two for the Spitfires. Basin Stokes game against Maidenhead United was abandoned after just one all due to a serious injury to Basin Stoke goalkeeper Che Morris. Winchester City's game against the Lamington Town was also called off due to a waterlogged pitch. With the university feeling the financial pinch, the student union is worried that some of Winchester University's sports teams could be cut. Amy Pickering investigates. 
sports teams at Winchester University are at risk of being axed after university budget cuts. I think worst case scenario is that teams will be completely disaffiliated and disbanded. That's the last resort. Realistically, if you're cutting teams, you would look at if there's third or fourth teams or more than one team in a sport, one of those teams will probably have to be cut. Josh Smith is a member of men's football fourth team, one of the most likely to be at risk after the cuts are announced in May. I think it's a shame um, for a few teams because some of them are doing very well. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of good players in certain teams. So, I mean, football, very popular sport, and there's four teams. I think all four teams this season are doing quite well or have done well in the past couple of seasons. As much as 20% of the student union's budget could be cut, meaning that all 61 sports and societies are under threat. Amy Pickering, Winchester News Online. Well, that's all from me. Back to Cara. Thanks, Michael. Well, that's all for this week, but make sure you stay tuned for What's On with Rebecca Gray. And, of course, for more award-winning news and sports, don't forget to log onto our website at www.winnell.co.uk. But from all of us here, goodbye.